Good morning, Massimo. Thank you so much for joining Good us. Morning. Thank you. Well, according to the um, GCBI or the Global Business Complexity Index 2020, Italy is the 36th most complex jurisdiction in the world. Uh, can you walk us through the details of the data and the criteria that you have used so far? Yes, with pleasure. So this index is a an annual report that compares several jurisdictions all over the world. In order to do so, we created a survey which covers about 250 criteria that can be grouped into three macro areas, such as accounting and taxation, regulatory rules and penalties, and uh, human resources and payroll. How do we do it? We send this survey to our professionals around the world, in this case in 77 jurisdictions, and these people have that local knowledge. Just to give an example, in the Italian office, seven people were involved into this survey. And questions range across several topics. Just some examples, the number of entities and uh, which, uh, with which a company must be registered in a given country, uh, the procedures and times to open a bank account from abroad, or the possibility of paying taxes from a foreign bank account, or just the timing needed to dismiss an underperforming employee. Um, as you can see, we try to use uh, aspects that are related to, set, to the setup of a business. And more importantly, what we do is basing our evaluation on parameters that are as objective as possible. What we don't want to do is having subjective perceptions of the complexity of a given country. So going down to Italy, you said, as, you, as uh, it's correct, that we rank 36 out of 77 countries, so kind of halfway through this ranking. I, but I think it could, this could be looked as a negative uh, number, but reality is that we rank only a few positions under countries that are traditionally considered very business friendly, such as Germany, Austria, and Finland. And uh, at a European level, we are 16th, in the 16th position, and uh, in West Southern Europe, we are like in pole position ahead of countries such as France. So there's definitely road uh, ahead of us. We cannot uh, be totally happy, but on the other hand, uh, we are not so bad as many times we think we are. Um, yeah, we do see, uh, actually the report I was showing to our viewers Italy is at a 36th place. What is surprising that a 38th uh, position is uh, grabbed by Sweden, which is definitely a surprise. I'm sure we're going to have time to delve deeper also into Sweden. But how much of an impact has the fiscal and jurisdiction uh, complexity on the business activity in Italy, uh, specifically when it comes to foreign investments, which right now is extremely important, also considering the hit that um, the country lived after, uh, after the coronavirus pandemic? Oh, yeah. Well, definitely. Italy has been historically a considered hampered by bureaucracy and taxation, which play an important role when companies are assessing a foreign country to invest. But apart from uh, the fiscal pressure, I think it's important to know that companies evaluate how easy it is uh, to handle with the fiscal regime in a foreign country. And as we know, Italy is quite complicated as a tax system. Uh, just an example, each single region has a different way to calculate taxes. Uh, on top of it, if we think that it's, Italy is also behind several other European countries in uh, simple activities such as opening a bank account, where it might take two to three months, months whereas in countries like the Czech Republic, it take a week or a month, as it happens in Ireland and the UK, in the sense that this is definitely a, a, a negative factor when companies make decision. Uh, another important factor that we need to take into consideration is the amount of time it takes for a company to end an employment relationship with a poorly productive employee. Uh, in Italy, unfortunately, it can take up to 24 weeks, that is six months, Whereas in many other European countries, it takes up to three or four weeks. So it is definitely 
needed in Italy to streamline and simplify se several processes, but this is something we might discuss a bit later on. So, um, yeah, you've already actually touched on my um, forward question, so I'm just going to switch to question, which is the most efficient state in Europe for new business activity at this point? Yeah, uh, according to our survey, Denmark is the most business friendly country in Europe. And I would say that probably uh, the reason for that is that Denmark has very uh, the, uh, efficiently adopted what I call the stick and the carrots approach. What do I mean with that? That they've been ahead in adopting internationally recognized compliance standards and they are very strict in, uh, in applying their rules and in their jurisdictions. So it, they, are very, they have a very strict forward jurisdictions in terms of rules, regulations and penalties. Just to give you some examples, that Denmark was one of the first countries in the European Union to adopt uh, to uh, UBO, Ultimate Beneficial Owner Register, that was in 2017. And this UBO has to be updated annually by all companies. Then uh, Danish uh, authorities also have clamped down on the use of shell companies that were used to you know, lighten the burden of compliance. On the other hand, and that is the carrot, it's very easy hiring and managing employees in, uh, in Denmark. It's a very straightforward process in all terms. So, as I said, it's, uh, it's really a carrot and stick approach which uh, brings to this uh, ranking. I think it's important to notice as well that out of uh, uh, the 10 less complex jurisdictions in the world, three are European. So, uh, in addition to uh, Denmark, which we touched upon right now, there's also the Netherlands and Ireland. So, I think it's important to know that the U Europe as a whole is a is a place where investors right. Uh, right. need to look at. Um, you've just mentioned that according to the GCBI, it takes at least 25 weeks to fire an insufficient worker. How much of an impact has this factor on the productivity? And let me just highlight for our viewers that the productivity has always been a major issue for, for, for the Italian economy. Yeah, well, uh, definitely uh, Italy has always had a very strict employment law which makes very difficult for companies to dismiss underperforming employees. In, Russian, in recent years, though, uh, uh, central governments have tried to ease this regulation in order to uh, guarantee a bit more flexibility coming from, uh, you know, these are, this is a need that came loud and clear from the business world. Uh, we have seen some changes, but unfortunately, yes, the dismissal is still a very lengthy uh, process. Again, as I said before, you know, we have countries where it takes less than a month or just a few weeks, whereas Italy is a very long, lengthy uh, uh, period. Uh, now, productivity, now with COVID, we right. definitely, uh, it's difficult to uh, assess the numbers for this year. But as you said, uh, it's been a, a, a very uh, a, a felt and a, a deep problem for Italy. Now, uh, this is definitely one of the reasons why we have other reasons that have a big impact on productivity right. in Italy. And to me, these are more, uh, this has, these are tied to infrastructures, to the lack of digitalization of the public sector, and to a very uh, complex a uh, judicial system. So it has an impact, but it's just one of the issues. In addition to that, I must say that in Italy, we, what is needed then is to, to build a very competitive and healthy environment based on meritocracy to push the level of productivity. Right. Uh, but I also think that, uh, not to be negative, actually I'm very optimistic about Italy, because Italy, apart from these negative sides, also has quite a few positive sides to mention. We right. are one of the main European economies and our workforce, though, although we have a very rigid, uh, you know, labor system is very pragmatic and very innovative. We are very, we are worldwide known for our cre creativity and flexibility that characterizes our approach. And we have people with a very solid and professional uh, background. And that, let me borrow some numbers from a very successful, at least me, entrepreneur that built one right. of the most 
popular brands in Italy in the world of food. That is Oscar Farinetti. I'm sure you know him. Uh, I'm just looking at some notes that I made during one of his uh, uh, talks. Uh, you may know that Italy uh, has about 0.5% of a global surface in terms of Earth. And we have 0.83% of, of the world population. But we have 7,000 edible vegetable, vegetable species in the world. The second country has only 3,300, that is Brazil. We have 58,000 animal species. The second country, which right. has 6% of the world surface, and is China, only has 20,000. We have 1,200 local vineyards. France, the second, has 222. So we have the biggest biodiversity in the world. We have 70% of the artistic heritage, and we are definitely ahead in several sectors. Luxury, for instance, a, a, a tourism, of course, and uh, uh, and we also have good Massimo. Massimo, thank you very much. We gotta wrap it up absolutely. Thank you very uh, much, Massimo Canavi, managing director, TMF Group, Italy. Thank you so much for joining us. Have a great day. Thank you.